My name is Peter, this is Inder, and we're going to present the project that we also did with uh, Anna Kulik, who unfortunately couldn't come here. So the project is called Stone Spray, and um, it started off as a research project in the Institute for Advanced Architecture of Catalonia in Barcelona, under the supervision of Marta Malé Alemani. And in the beginning, we were fascinated by an idea of making a robotic 3D printer that could uh, print architectural objects on site using only the materials that can be found there and they could work on renewable energy. So which material you can find on every building site? So we were inspired by these um, beehive dwellings or just mud, uh, mud structures that could be found all over Africa or India and they are made out of mud or sand or dirt that can be found. People make it themselves, they stick it and the uh, interesting thing is that you can see these ledges um, on the buildings. They are made um, not only to uh, give structural strength, but to make it easier for people to climb and patch the buildings because they are made out of mud and they are very fragile, so they need patching all the time. Uh, this is the beautiful mosque of Genet in Mali. And uh, we thought, what if we could make these buildings from the material that does not need to be patched with using soil and some other component that could make it rock hard and uh, could make it um, very very uh, long lasting so which material can you find to uh, bind or to solidify soil which is so different that is like this in Mali or like this a very rough soil in Iran or even rougher soil in Idaho, which is, have completely different properties. And the answer came from uh, pavement, uh, from the pavement uh, industry. Uh, there are a lot of companies that are building these little uh, light traffic um, roads uh, using just the soil that, can be, that is there, solidifying it with, um, with, a, with a solidified soil st stabilizer. And this material, it's basically just um, ethylene acrylic polymer, which um, is sprayed on the road like this. And in a matter of days, this road becomes as uh, strong to carry uh, huge trucks. And it can last very, very long. So actually, that's, uh, that's how it's been done. So they dig up the road and the truck with uh, this material comes, sprays it on, and uh, in a few days you can ride your car on this road. Um, so the question is, how actually do you make a 3D printer with these two components, like sand and uh, this binder? So we uh, did a lot of experiments and we invented, uh, invented yeah, this nozzle that with, a sand pre uh, with the air pressure pushes the sand from one jet spray and with um, uh, from the other two jet sprays, it pushes the solidifier components, so they mix together in the uh, mid-air and uh, fall on the targeted surface, creating a solid object. And as you can see here, the interesting thing is that you can spray it not only vertically, like conventional 3D printers do that use fused deposition modeling, you can sp uh, spray your material everywhere, even on vertical surfaces, so you can actually add some um, more um, structures to already existing structures. Um, we made a robot. Well, we used a turntable to make the uh, base, and it was a five-axis robot, quite precise, though. And uh, so we decided to actually try it out. And um, that's what we've got. We went to the beach in Barcelona. As you can see, it's 5 AM in the morning, because there is nobody. Otherwise, it's full. And uh, Yep, we just came there. That's me. Setting up the robot. That's in there bringing the container for the sand that's also needed. That is our beautiful Anna, who's not here.
we are mixing the material. So we took this polymer and we mix it in. Uh, we make it especially uh, a bit different mix, so it works better with a 3D printer because it's not the same making the roads and printing stuff. Well, then you have to connect a lot of wires together. And as we said, you take the material just from, from the bottom, from the ground. You don't need to carry any material with you. What is also interesting about this material, you need just one liter bottle to solidify one cubic meter of soil. So that, that's, that's a lot, because you need to carry just one little bottle to solidify, to make a huge structure. That's Anya setting up the robot. And we start printing. So um, well, the uh, robot prints, and uh, it makes this uh, the way the stool, and Annie actually sat on it, and uh, it absolutely can hold you. And um, you see this, that we don't make solid structures. I mean, they're not completely full of, filled with sand. It's made because making structures like, like you can see here, they all have cavities. And that's made for faster solidifying. Because if you make a little column, it solidifies much faster. And um, it still uh, can carry the load. So it's structurally strong. You can actually touch it later. Uh, we made a tree experiment, so we wanted to actually understand how, how far can you make just one column without any support. And the box that you can see here, it suffered an easy jet transfer, but still it's quite solid. And here's a little accounting that we made. We're architects, so don't blame us. Uh, we just counted how much energy actually it uses to prove that it can easily work with uh, be empowered by just by two solar panels that gain uh, 100 watts, and uh, this these panels are not that big, so basically you can mount them on the robot, and that's the robot that we want to make because our previous prototype was not um, could not move. But what we want to make is an autonomous robot that can uh, you can uh, put somewhere in the desert and it can go by itself and build the structures that are um, that are in the model that you sent to it. So imagine, like, what is the application of this? Imagine you have a cliff like this, where there are not many people, and it's very hot, and you don't have any materials to bring there. And then you bring just the robot. Then the robots start, you, you, so they use the material on site. They, they take the, the dirt on site, and they start printing. And then they connect the, the bridge, and you get a nice couple on it. In, also, maybe you could make a um, beach canopy like this. It's also in Barcelona. And uh, the thing is that to make this structure, you need to carry just one little bottle of the solidifying material. Everything else can be found on site, as, and the energy as well to power the robot. So we thought maybe we can not only do just good looking things, but try to make some uh, useful things. And I'm sure all of you have seen this lecture by, on TED by a man called uh, Magnus Larsen, who proposed to make a green wall of Sahara and uh, to stop the desertification. And he proposes to make it with a material that is called Bacillus pastori, which is a uh, uh, bacteria. But we think that actually our robot can uh, do the same thing because, because, well, we didn't see the results of this project yet, but we are sure that our robot can do the same thing. You can send it to the desert where you can find nobody and it can build these things. They can actually become the wall and people can really live inside because th these are absolutely normal homes. So 
this is our short presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? Um, one question: um, How long-lasting is this material? So, does it hold for many years? Or? Yeah, like the tests uh, which we did uh, for the material were uh, like we did the strength test and uh, the basic uh, the life. Uh, uh, we uh, submerged these uh, materials within water and. They were very, uh, very solid. So it, it just, uh, so I think life uh, for, for these structures could be very long. But you had no actual uh, number? No, because we just did like uh, uh, around uh, seven months of experimentation. So uh, like the structures which we made uh, like uh, uh, from the beginning, they are uh, very stable. You must bring the polymers to the desert, or what? And uh, how many uh, of the polymers you, you need to build one cubic meter or something? As I said, uh, yeah, of course you need to bring just this. But as I said, to solidify one cubic meter of soil, which is a lot, you need just one liter of the polymer. So uh, to create this structure, uh, because as we counted in the model, it's about three cubic meters of soil, you need just three liters, which is, which is not much. Of course, yeah, of course you need to bring something, but it's quite little amount. Hi, um, I have two questions. One, um, did you publish any paper about this? Because I know, I, I'm pretty sure the details must be crazy, like the grain size and so on and so on. And second is, what, what is the name of the polymer again? Um, so, uh, First, first answer the paper. We have a website that is called Stone Spray, actually, with much more information. Uh, and uh, we have a book that is actually published. So you can see in the book much more details about the proportions that should be used and things like that. The, um, the uh, material that we use, it's actually solid. It's called uh, poly pavement. It's a, a company based in the US that sells this uh, material. But they don't reveal completely their recipe, but it's called, uh, it's acrylic, basically. It's acrylic rubber. And, sorry? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. And uh, the thing is that it's lead, lead certified. That's why we can prove that this is very, well, this is ecological. How much do you think will it cost to produce a robot uh, if it's in the state as you said? Robot, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the robot that we produced, I mean, we used some materials that could be found anywhere, uh, costed around 150 euros. So, well, but this is a prototype. To produce the bigger robot, of course, you will need more amount of money. But um, the thing is, the nozzle itself is very light, so you don't need an industrial robot like KUKA or ABB to hold this nozzle because uh, it doesn't weigh anything, so that, that will reduce a lot of cost. And also you don't need those very powerful actuators like motors. So. Well, um, how long did the robot take to uh, build the structure we see over there? Yet it starts from the design stage. Uh, what we uh, basically, uh, for making this, uh, what we did was to just make a bounding box, and then the code generates a form, and uh, then the code is fed uh, directly to the robot. And this uh, entire thing took around two hours to make, because each path uh, which the code generates that's uh, fed to like a tool path for the robot to construct and uh, and then it just starts off. So this uh, box uh, took two hours to make. So for uh, like a bigger structure, because uh, uh, since uh, that's a robot constructing it, it, it can make it a day and night. So it can be like a continuous process. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, hello. Uh, Strength-wise, how does it relate to concrete or other standard building materials? Yeah, uh, compared to concrete, uh, 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 obviously it can't be compared to concrete for strength height, but uh, like the strength, uh, strength tests, uh, strength tests uh, which we conducted on the material proved that the material is, is, is very strong. Uh, you can uh, come and feel the strength uh, for the material. Uh, like half the strength of concrete would be uh, like an approximation of the strength of material. Do you have to filter the materials? Yeah, uh, you just have to filter the rocks because uh, the rock because uh, the because uh, uh, the main nozzle is designed in a way so that the sand is sprayed. So suppose uh, you have a, a bigger grain of sand or, or like a small piece of rock, it might just block the nozzle. So you need to just do a, a very a, a, a very light uh, filtration of how the sand uh, so that it can be sprayed properly. Thanks. And if you do it on the beach, you also have to take out the cigarettes. Um, hi. Um, of course, you heard of this project where um, people use the sunlight directly to make glass out of sand. Um, is there a possibility to combine uh, your project with this, maybe? Um, maybe. Well, well, of course, we know about this project by Markus Kaiser, and uh, it, it's very good. The only uh, thing is that he, um, his robot is always should be much bigger than the objects that it creates, which we try to avoid it uh, because our robot can be like it could be a robotic arm and it could build huge structures. But combining this, well, maybe it's an it's an interesting idea.